everybody, welcome back to Fragmental. It's springtime, it's that time of year when we maybe start wearing fragrances that have a few more florals in them. So I thought I'd let you know what my top five florals and fragrances are. Stay tuned to FM. So I've been in this location now for uh, almost two weeks and when I first arrived here this cherry orchard was not in bloom it was pretty much just a brown tunnel but as you can see behind me I've got this gorgeous pink cherry blossom coming out and really I just wanted an excuse to um, to film it and make a video with uh, with such gorgeous surroundings and I thought what better type of video to make than a video about florals in fragrances it kind of fits in with the theme of the blooming cherry blossom and springtime and I've not really done a video before on fragrance notes I don't purport to know a great deal about fragrance notes. Um, I'm not going to go into things in, in a great deal of depth, but over the years of wearing fragrances, I've got to know which florals crop up in fragrances that I really enjoy. So I thought I'd share them with you. The first note I'm going to talk about is a white floral, and you'll see that there's maybe a theme with white florals in this video. It's in two of my favorite fragrances. I'm talking about the note of Neroli. It is of course famously in Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino and another fragrance that I absolutely adore is Aqua de Palma's Colonia Ascenza. So Neroli, it's a white floral and to me it has uh, an elegance about it, it has a sweetness, uh, a bit of soapiness as well, so almost a sweet, soapy, elegant quality. I always feel like Neroli is a delicate note. I think if there were too many um, darker, heavier, mature notes in a fragrance, it could just override the Neroli a little bit. So I think you tend to find that the fragrances that have Neroli in um, are, are slightly lighter fragrances, often fresher fragrances, often combined with the citrus. I really love Colonia Ascenza because it has a depth to it that uh, lends it to um, to wearing pretty much year round. It's not just a, a light, fresh fragrance that fizzles out too quickly. Neroli Portofino is, that's known to not really last uh, a long time, but it's just a light, uh, very easy to wear summer fragrance. Uh, but Neroli is a gorgeous note in fragrances. Um, it's just got um, a very pleasing quality to it and I do tend to like fragrances that contain Neroli. The next note I'm going to talk about is another white floral, it's the note of orange blossom. Again, I find orange blossom quite a, a light uh, floral, it's not a heavy floral at all, there's some heavier florals come in uh, higher up this list. Again, quite delicate, uh, almost got a fragile feel to it, but whenever its presence is in a fragrance, it has a really lovely orangey, uh, citrusy, but kind of sweet honeyed vibe. Reminds me of um, a smell that I always uh, thought was honeysuckle. Uh, playing in the woods as a kid on days like this, on spring days, on summer days when it was warm and you could just get this lovely sweet honey smell all through the woodland. So whenever I smell orange blossom it takes me back to those carefree days as a child which is maybe why I enjoy it as a note. Uh, a fragrance that I have a sample of that I don't own is actually called Orange Blossom. It's from Penhaligans. That is a beautiful rendition of Orange Blossom. Not a lot going on in that but Orange Blossom on its own is just such a beautiful note that uh, it it works so well and another fragrance that I do own which is one of my favorites one of the most versatile designer fragrances is Dolce & Gabbana's The One which is uh, the Eau de Parfum concentration is the one I have that has a lovely note of orange blossom it contains tobacco again which is why I like that fragrance but more so than the tobacco I feel the orange blossom is a bit more front and center than the tobacco in uh, Dolce & Gabbana's The One so orange blossom is another of my favorite notes the next note I'm going to talk about is the note of iris. Now a few years ago before I really got into fragrances, if someone had said to me, do you like iris in your fragrances? I would not have thought that um, iris would really be in masculine fragrances or male marketed fragrances. I didn't really know a lot about scents at that time and I would have just associated iris as being more of a feminine note in fragrances, even though I didn't really know what the note of iris smelled like. Iris at its strongest can have a really lipsticky vibe, uh, often described as smelling like a, a makeup bag, it's got a powderiness to it. If it's supported by more masculine, more mature notes in fragrances, it really just works perfectly. And a great example of that, one of my favorite fragrances of all time is Diorom Parfum. In fact, Iris is present in the whole Dior Online, it's present in the, uh, in the Prada Lom fragrances, and 
particularly in Dior on Parfum, it's combined with some darker notes, in particular a leather. So you've got the light and shade, so the, uh, the darker notes in that don't let the iris become too feminine and too floral. It lets just enough of that floral accord through to maintain its masculinity and lend a nice kind of airiness and lightness and brightness to the fragrance. But mixed with those darker notes, Dior on Parfum just works a treat. Back to white florals, my next one is the note of tuberose. Now, tuberose is often described as being a real kind of sensual, carnal floral note. In fact, it's front and center in Frederick Mal's carnal flower, which I don't own. I've smelled numerous occasions. I adore it. Um, it's a fragrance that I'd love to pick up. Whenever there's tuberose in a fragrance, it almost gives me this sweet, full-bodied, creamy bubblegum type accord. So yeah, if you think of Carnal Flower, another fragrance that I do own that has tuberose in is Luxuria from the House of Memoirs, relatively new house. I do own that one. It's a fantastic scent. It is quite floral. I think it's pretty much straight down the middle. I think some people would say, some men would say it's maybe a little too feminine, but I really enjoy it. I can wear it. And another fragrance that is actually called bubblegum or has bubblegum in the name is the Healy fragrance bubblegum chic that's almost like smelling a stick of bubblegum but in a really good way in a really wearable way so if you like sweet floral bubblegum style fragrances then you would probably really enjoy the note of tuberose another one that I do own I've just realized also has that jasmine tuberose pairing is pirates from Byron Parfums which is one of my favorites from that house as well so tuberose is a uh, beautiful note. Okay, on to my number one floral. I've already mentioned this. It's the note of jasmine, which to me is probably the most indolic white floral of them all. I think lily of the valley can be quite indolic, but I really find jasmine to be quite thick and heavy and creamy. And to me, when I say indolic, I, I think it means that it has this, um, this sweetness, this potency mixed with this real uh, creamy, full-bodied accord. I find jasmine to be uh, almost as sensual as tuberose, if not just as sensual really. I do find it a very sensual fragrance. A fragrance that the, 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 the sensuality of jasmine really comes to the fore. It's the biggest jasmine bomb um, you'll ever smell in a fragrance is uh, Lust from Lush, uh, which is Gorilla Perfumes, their uh, in-house um, uh, perfume brand. And if you want to know what jasmine smells like, if you want the strongest jasmine fragrance, certainly that I've smelt, then go and buy Lust. It's, uh, you don't need many sprays. It is really strong. I've worn it, my wife's worn it, and I, I really enjoy it. It almost has this lipsticky glossiness about it. it it's such a strong jasmine, but it is um, strong, but, but beautifully done in my opinion. And another famous fragrance that is really heavy on the jasmine is uh, Alien. So the female marketed fragrance from Mugler which I have the Louis Cardin um, version of that which is marketed to males uh, interestingly enough and I really enjoy it I just think jasmine is uh, a note that uh, whether people around me think I pull it off I don't know but to me I feel like I do and I really enjoy wearing it another probably my um, most loved jasmine fragrance is reflection man from Amouage that's just a gorgeous pairing of jasmine and sandalwood. So I feel like jasmine done well has a really lovely smooth quality. So does sandalwood, has this smooth creaminess and they just work perfectly in Reflection Man. Okay, so there it is, just a short video on florals. Maybe I'll do more videos on specific notes and fragrances in the future. If you think that's a good idea, if you'd like to hear more about notes and fragrances on my channel then let me know in the comments down below i would be happy to explore other notes and uh, make more videos so thanks for joining me in this uh, beautiful blooming spring location it's just perfectly floral which is why i wanted to make this video um, hope you found it interesting hope you found it useful i would love to know what your favorite floral notes are in fragrances uh, let me know if you're a guy if you think floral notes uh, prevent a fragrance from being masculine enough to wear do you like any florals in fragrances like i say sometimes uh, you, you may not know there are florals in fragrances they are present in most compositions um, as far as i can tell so something like dolce gamana is the one has that orange blossom in there but to me a very masculine very sensual fragrance so let me know what your favorite floral fragrance notes are it's a bit of a mouthful and uh, let's get a conversation going so thanks for watching everybody and remember keep tuning into fm and keep smelling good